that money some way else, some other way, uh, it's bullshit. They're lying to you. And then what they do is they start selling a course, right? You can buy my course. If you, you know, if you just buy my course, you can be standing in front of this Lamborghini too. And then you've got some guy who's sitting on his couch who's like 43 years old and he's fat and he's bald and there's kids everywhere and there's Legos all over the floor and he's tired and he's burnt out from his 9 to 5 lifestyle. And he goes, man, if this fucking 23-year-old can have a Lamborghini, why don't I have this life? I'm going to buy his course. I want that Lamborghini. And so they buy the course. They spend the, you know... The, the $700 or the $400 or the three easy payments, $49.99, and they get the course. And the thing that these people with these courses are doing, like, they know that their course is bullshit. I mean, I've never read one of those courses, but I would imagine that it's just a lot of fluff and bullshit. I don't think these people actually expect anyone to read the actual course material. I think the goal, the end goal for them isn't to teach people how to be better traders or investors or marketers or or whatever whatever. Um, whatever they're coaching you to do, I don't think they're actually expecting you to follow through, right? Do you remember those, um, those infomercials from the 90s where they would say, if you order this course, you can get, you know, we'll send you uh, eight VHS tapes and 32 tape cassettes that you can listen to on your way to work and we'll send you this book and the book is like 7,000 pages and look at all the value. And when you're sitting on the couch at three in the morning, depressed and miserable, you're looking at it and you're going, wow, look at all that value I'm getting. Ladies and gentlemen, these volumes can make you thousands of dollars for the rest of your life. And I'm making this complete cash flow system over 20 hours of audio tapes and over 1,400 pages of written material for only $367. That means you're going to own this valuable information for only $45.87 per course. In celebration of my fifth year on television, for a limited time only, I'm going to include the following bonuses. You'll receive a copy of Instant Mail Order Millions, Dave's newest book, How You Can Start and Profit from Your Own Home Mail Order Business. And the first 100 callers will receive Dave's national bestseller, How to Make Nothing But Money. This volume alone, folks, is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars through the information that's contained in this book. That's right, I'm getting like a whole college education in this course. I'm going to buy it. And then they buy it and it comes, it shows up in the mail. And what do you do? You open it and you go, you go, Jesus Christ, look at all this material. Ugh, I'm, I'm not going to do this now. I'm not going to read all of this now, but I will one day. And so they put it in the closet, you know, cause they're already so burnt out. Is, is what, you know, do they really want to sit there? and read a course and go through all of that work? No, they don't. Their intentions are to do it eventually one day, but right now, they're too tired. They're too tired. They'll, they'll do it later, you know, because they always say, like, and your money back. If you're not happy, you'll get your money back. But they don't want to sit. They don't, they're not going to open it and go, I'm not going to do this. They want to believe in themselves. They want to say, you know, one day maybe I will do this. One day maybe I will actually go through this course. It's just not going to be today. And so they stuff it in the closet and they kind of forget about it uh, until like a couple years go by and their, their wife or their kids or someone that they know says, hey, we're having a, a neighborhood yard sale. Why don't you join us and you can sell some of your shit that you've got sitting around. And they look in their closet and they go, all right, I might as well sell this course. I never did it. I'm never going to do it. And they just put the course in the yard sale. And they go, well, that was a waste of three easy payments of $49.99. But, you know, all right. Because that's how we look at money, right? We look at money as like, oh, well, what was I going to do with that $150 anyway? You know, I'm not going to retire on that $150. What, what, what could I have done with that $150 that I wasted on that course? Maybe dinner and a movie, a date night? All right, so I missed out on one date night because that's how we look at money. We don't look at it in terms of how can it work for me and how can it help me grow and build wealth. We look at it as, eh, I probably would have just gone out for dinner and a movie. Oh, well, big deal. Not that much money at the end of the day, except that it is, right? That $150 wasted on that course is $150 that you could have put into that dividend-paying stock that you really like, right? And build wealth over a long period of time over compounding interest and growing a position. You know, maybe people go, well, but what can I do? You know, what can I do with $150? I can't really start investing with $150, Except that, of course you can. Of course you can start investing with $150.
you can start by buying a couple shares of every company that you like, especially the ones that pay good solid dividends and are blue chip companies that have been around for a very long time. And you can find those by Googling them. And you can do your research, but you're going to know those companies. And you, you can buy those companies a little bit at a time and build wealth slowly over a long period of time. It's like, it's like when you go to the, to the gas station and you pick up $20 worth of scratch-off tickets every week while you're waiting for your car to fill up, you know, hoping you hit it big this time. And you go, well, it's only 20 bucks. It's only 20 bucks. What could that do for me? Except that that $20 a week on scratch-off tickets is $80 a month. That could be put towards a dividend stock. And we look at it as, but I'm not getting much, so I might as well not even bother. Except that over time, that money builds. And when you get dividend payments, they might not be a lot initially, but they will grow over time. And when you start looking at every other area of your life and seeing where you can cut back, and this is where minimalism comes into this, right? Because a lot of people go like, if your whole gimmick is like, combining minimalism and stock trading how does that really work right aren't you a hypocrite like if if you're telling people to cut back on their spending but you're also hoping that the earnings reports are going to be like really good which in turn means that like people are spending a lot of money like okay yeah sure everyone's a hypocrite about something okay i'm a hypocrite about this i don't want to buy i don't want to consume i want to live a simple life but when a company has a really great earnings report because people are buying shitty clothes or stupid electronics, I love it. Great, good for me. And that's how you have to look at it too. You have to look at where can I cut back on my life? Do I need all this stuff? No. And that's what society wants us to do, right? Society wants us to be miserable and frustrated with our lives and frustrated with our day-to-day -day existence. So we feel like we deserve to buy stuff. We deserve that new product. We deserve that new pair of shoes, that new pocketbook that new watch, that new whatever, because we're so beaten down and depressed and miserable that we have to. We have to buy new stuff constantly to fill that void of, of sadness and de depression. We're all so miserable and tired and frustrated that we have to fill the void by shopping. But if you can, if you can start to realize that you will have a better quality of life, more financial freedom, when you break from that lifestyle, you'll be able to start saving more money, still working your miserable, shitty job that you hate for the meantime, working that lifestyle, and instead of rewarding yourself with crap, you can reward yourself by purchasing more stock, which builds wealth over the future and will let you have a better, more enjoyable quality of life later on. So you start cutting back. All right, maybe I don't need that pair of shoes this month. Maybe I don't need those $20 in scratch-offs every week. Maybe I don't need um, whatever it is that I'm buying to fill my void of depression. Maybe I can start going outside more and exercising a little bit and fill the void that way while saving some money that I can then put into the stock market and build wealth over the long term instead of wasting it on courses here and there by these asshole 23-year-olds who could give a shit if you actually learn what they're selling. And when you do that, over a period of time, you'll build up a significant amount of savings, which will allow you to start buying larger and larger positions in stocks. And it kind of becomes a little addictive in like a fun way. Like, how can I cut back this month? How can I buy more? If I'm buying five shares a month in this company, how can I get eight shares? How can I get 10 or 12? You know, um, and you start building on this position. Next thing you know, you have a better understanding of how the stock market works. You've been doing this for a while now, so you understand volatility. You understand when the markets dip and if they're dipping for a real frightening reason or if it's just profit taking. You'll start to learn and pick up on these little things. And over time, you'll start trading stocks. And once you start trading stocks, that's when you really start to have the financial freedom to go, you know what? I've, I've cut down on my spending. I'm living a more simplified, minimalistic, purposeful life. I don't need all these extravagances. I have savings now set aside to carry me through slower months or downturns. I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to focus on trading stocks because I'm not losing money uh, to the rate that I thought I would. 
right? Everyone associates the stock market with tremendous loss. You hear about Bernie Madoff in the recession and you know your friends who, with Enron and they lost, they lost everything in the stock market and, and you don't want that to happen to you. But as I've talked about in other videos, you'll have stop losses set up, either mental stop losses or actual ones that you can set up on your Thinkorswim uh, Ameritrade software that as a stock starts to go down, it auto triggers that stop loss to minimize your loss. You know, you have to check your ego and your pride uh, at the door when you're doing this, right? Like, I know a lot of people think like, well, I researched the stock. I know the stock. I picked this stock. I don't want it to be a loser. Then I'm a loser. I'm going to hold it. And that's when you get into trouble because then the stock starts to crash. The stock starts to go down and you're stuck holding it. You're stuck holding it at a, at a 5% loss and you go, well, it'll come back. And then it's a 10% loss. Well, it'll come back. Well, it's a 15% loss. Well, it'll come back, right? And then you start freaking out. You start going online and reading these reports and people are going, sell it, sell it. And you go, well, I don't want to sell it now. I'll have lost 20% of my money. And so you watch it gradually tank all the way, 50% loss, 70% loss. And you're going, well, now I really can't sell it. I'm not going to lose 70% of my money. I'll just hold it. And that's how people get fucked in the stock market. But if you have a stop loss and you see that stock that you're trading start to go down, you sell it. You lose 85 bucks, you lose 100 bucks, and you get out and you go, all right, dodge the bullet with that one. And the difference between trading stocks and investing in stocks is the stocks that you're investing in are good long-term dividend-paying stocks that will swing violently at times based on economic news, earnings news, etc. All that stuff factors into the investments and you don't want to always sell an investment when it goes down 7% because you're holding it for the long term. And like I've said in other videos, the, the hope with the stock market is that over time it goes up. So if you pick the good stock, if it's well regarded by Wall Street, if it pays a solid, uh, uh, reliable dividend over many years, as it starts to go down, you can do the research, you can read what's going on, and you can make a judgment call at that time. But generally... You, you don't mind holding on to those stocks when they have a 7% loss or a 10% loss because the goal, as I said, is that it, it goes up over time. So when it's down 7%, instead of panicking and selling, you can buy more at a lower price. It's like the stock market goes on sale. You can get that stock at a lower price. Um, if you're trading stocks, it's an entirely different ballgame because you're throwing in a lot of money for a very short, quick turnaround. And if that stock starts to go down, it can go down drastically and, um, and then you can get, you end up getting stuck with a loser. So when you're trading stocks, the goal then is to say, I'm pulling the plug, I'm getting out now. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pulling the plug on this loser. I lost 2% of my money on a $10,000 investment. 2% is $200. That sucks. But at least I didn't lose 7%. At least I didn't lose 10%, which would be $1,000. So you definitely have to keep that in mind when you're trading to minimize your losses. You want to protect as much capital as you can. And also you want to hope that you have more wins than losses. To eke out those little small losses, you want to, you want to, you want to buy the stock at the right time. You want to buy it at the dip in the, in the late afternoon or in the early morning when it starts to sell off. You want to go in. You want to go in strong. And you want to buy 500 shares when it's down a lot when it's bottomed and then hope that it starts to turn around and usually what you want to do is you want to buy it at the breakout right so it's going to go down and down and down and then there's going to be so much volume coming into that stock that it's going to it's going to turn around and it's going to break out it's going to put an end to its downtrend for the day and the stock is going to start to edge a little higher when you start seeing it begin to turn around and you start to see it break out of that tight early morning sell off range that's when you start to get in. You ride it as it starts to rebound. And since you don't know where the top is going to be, you don't know where it's going to go. All right, we've reached new high. We've reached the high for the day. It can't possibly go any higher than this. At some point, you're going to have to sell it. And you're going to have to take that profit. And it might suck. You might, you might sell the stock when it's up 3% and then watch it go up another 2 and go, fuck, if I had just kept it, I'd have had 5% instead of 3%. But the alternative to that, the flip side to that is you hold it at 3% going, I want five, I'm going to be greedy, I want five, I want five. And then instead, it dips and it drops. And now you end up losing money. It goes down 
five percent. So you have to take your two percent loss and you go, fuck, I should have sold it when it was three. So since you don't know where the top is going to be, it never hurts to take a profit, right? One, one of these guys that I know, um, he always used to say, nobody ever went broke taking a profit. And that's the goal here. Okay, fine, you have smaller profits. Maybe it could have gone up a little bit more. But at least you're using your money to build on your wealth versus paying money on a course that you're never going to take.